All right, ladies and gentlemen, you are locked on Falcons. I'm your host, Aaron Freeman. And today we are talking about how Vincent Taylor being out for the year uh, only increases the Falcons defensive line needs. Arthur Smith's revamped preseason policy is going to help Desmond Ritter's development. And if Jalen Mayfield is already on the roster bubble. You are locked on Falcons, your daily Atlanta Falcons podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So, guys, you know me. I'm Aaron Freeman. been covering the Falcons for many years, formerly at FalcFans.com, RIP. Still going strong on Twitter at FalcFans. And, of course, the host of this world-renowned Locked On Falcons podcast, your daily Atlanta Falcons podcast, part of the Locked On Sports Atlanta podcast family. And we thank everyone that makes Locked On Falcons their first listen each and every day, Monday through Friday. It is free and available on a variety of podcast platforms, including Apple, Odyssey, Google, and Spotify. And of course, you can also check out Locked on Falcons on YouTube. Subscribe to Locked on Falcons on YouTube. Hit that bell. Give us a like, and you will get the video version of the podcast the night before the audio drops. So today we're going to be kind of recapping at least my thoughts on some of the headlines from day six of Falcons training camp, starting off with the season ending injury to Vincent Taylor, who, which he suffered on Tuesday, this sixth day of training camp and will be out for the season with a torn Achilles. Uh, Taylor was a player that we talked about recently as early as recently as Monday's episode as a guy that had a golden opportunity to sort of earn that spot as that interior pass rusher in sub packages next to Grady Jarrett. And he's uh, certainly the more experienced pass rusher on this team besides Grady Jarrett sort of competing alongside Marlon Davidson for that role. Uh, and it's a tough break for Vincent Taylor because he's dealt with injuries a, a number of times and it's kind of derailed his NFL career. He had a season ending ankle injury at the start of last year in week one uh, when he was the starter for the Texans. He notably also suffered a season ending injury midway through his 2018 season when he was with the Dolphins. And that was the season where he was off to one of the better starts of his career. And that sort of begun that sort of derailing of his career um, and he's kind of bounced around the league the last couple of years with several different teams. And the hope was that, you know, landing here in Atlanta, he would finally get the opportunity to get things back on track. And unfortunately, that does not at least appear to be the case for the 2022 season. And we already knew that the Falcons were thin at the defensive line position. They were already probably looking uh, for somebody along the defensive line, kind of reeling from that Eddie Goldman retirement earlier uh, this summer. Uh, we've been projecting for a while now that the Falcons would keep like six defensive linemen on their roster. And we felt five of those guys currently on the team, which included Taylor, were likely to be five of those six guys, the other four being Grady Jarrett, Anthony Rush, Taquan Graham, and Marlon Davidson. And so... Now you're, you know, you were already in the market to go out there and get a sixth guy. Now you're potentially in the market to go out and get a fifth guy. So there's two potential new bodies that the Falcons may be looking for between now and the start of the regular season. But it'll be interesting to see if the Falcons, you know, are sort of jumping headlong into going out there and getting a, a proven veteran, like a lot of people speculated, you know, post. Eddie Goldman retirement, they they only signed a, a guy like Darian Daniels, who's sort of more of a street free agent to fill that spot. And I wouldn't be shocked if they do that again here to fill the role of Vincent Taylor because they want to sort of give some of these younger guys more opportunities. That was one of the things that Arthur Smith praised. Is that some of these guys are already sort of starting to step up, whether it's any of the undrafted free agents like Timmy Horn and Derek Tangelo. You also have Jalen Dalton, Nick Thurman as well. So I wouldn't be shocked at all that the Falcons won't go out there and make that splash signing like a Brandon Williams or a Danny Shelton or, you know, uh, Linval Joseph, some of the other names that we've thrown around uh, in the last couple of uh, weeks and months talking about some potential options for the Falcons along the defensive line. So uh, we'll just sort of have to see how that goes. But certainly, you know, as we get later this month, if the Falcons don't make that sort of more splash signing, you know, in, in this week, you know, we'll, we'll be keeping an eye on the waiver wire we'll be keeping an eye on on certain you know 
players that are rumored to be on the trade block and and whatnot. You know, there's a certain guy in Washington that we've talked about before with Deron Payne uh, as a you know, potential option, given that Kyle Smith connection here in Atlanta. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on, on this things, but I, I wouldn't necessarily expect the Falcons to go out there and make a big splash tomorrow or anything like that. Uh, so I think they'll sort of, you know, be patient and see what develops over the course of this month and see what options they have uh, moving forward and, and what the, some of the current options currently on the roster can do. So we'll see. Uh, if those guys can step up, you know, this is a golden opportunity for Marlon Davidson, who we also talked about on Monday, uh, you know, in Vincent Taylor's absence to show that he can help fill some of this void as the team is, is desperate to find that sort of other guy, that other interior pass rusher that can come in on the field and play next to Grady Jarrett and win those one on ones when we know that Grady Jarrett's going to often get double teamed this year. And so we'll see if Marlon Davidson, this is the year where and this is the opportunity where he can finally start living up to that status as a former second round pick um but speaking of not second round picks but day two picks let's talk a little bit more about desmond ritter and as we continue today's episode we'll talk about how you know now that arthur smith is is singing kind of a different tune about playing starters in the preseason that's going to aid desmond ritter's development this year and potentially into the future and we'll talk about that as we continue today's episode but before we get there guys i want to let you know that today's episode is sponsored by better hope and one of the things that I often joke about on uh, this show is that this podcast is essentially therapy for me. Obviously, it's one-sided therapy, and we only talk about one particular subject. That's the Atlanta Falcons. But in honesty, over the last year or two, you know, I've thought about you know talking to a real therapist and having a real conversation where that person can talk back to me, unlike most of you, and, and talk about some more important things going on in my life. And now I've already gone up and signed up with our new sponsor, BetterHelp, and I'm looking forward to see how that goes. And if you're looking to find ways to navigate through all life's twists and turns, BetterHelp Online Therapy will assess your needs, match you with their own uh, licensed professional therapist in less than 48 hours. BetterHelp is not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional therapy done securely online, available to people worldwide. You can log on anytime and send a message to your therapist. You can schedule weekly video or phone sessions just in case you don't want to be on camera. Uh, It's more affordable than traditional online therapy and financial aid is also available. And I know for me, that was a sticking point as why I was hesitant to try therapy because I wasn't necessarily keen on the idea of paying all that money and better help is a more affordable way. And I, now I think about it as investing in myself. So if you're looking to make a similar investment, head to the website, take advantage of this special offer where you can get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash locked on. That's 10% off your first month of online therapy at better H E L P.com slash locked on. So, Tuesday was the second day of padded practice for the Atlanta Falcons. And, you know, of notes before we talk about uh, the Falcons and and Desmond Ritter, you know, Brian Edwards was back in practice. He was wearing a yellow non-contact jersey. So that confirms if anybody who was concerned about, you know, Brian Edwards being out for a long term, that was not necessarily the case. Uh, And so it confirms that uh, his injury was a relatively minor one. Um, You know, the other thing that stood out on Tuesday was Arthur Smith in his post practice presser talked about, was asked about, you know, Jake Matthews and Chris Lindstrom's playing in the preseason. And he basically said, everybody's going to play. Now, obviously not everybody's going to play the same number of snaps, um, but you know, that's a notable change. And we've touched upon this before. Arthur Smith has already uh, mentioned this, this off season that he changed his tune from how he treated the preseason. For those of you that weren't listening to the podcast last summer, that was a major pet peeve of mine, a frequent thing that I complained about. You know, I always got to find something to complain about, about the Falcons. And last August it was, why aren't we playing guys in the preseason? Um, And, you know, you know, I'm I'm still petty, you know, me, uh, because I still think about all the people that insisted to me that like Arthur Smith knows what he's doing and you're just a guy on the internet. And meanwhile, you know, a year later, Arthur Smith is like, my bad. Yeah, I, I messed up on that one, guys. Uh, so, you know, you know, sometimes like, you know, but uh, <laughs> but, you know, it'll be interesting how they sort of, you know, assess 
certain players like the Jake Matthews, like the Chris Lindstrom's of the world, because we know there's a handful of players on this roster that don't necessarily need to play that much snaps in a preseason, right? You know, maybe 10 snaps or something like that, 25 snaps, you know, not more than that. You know, you got Matthews, you got Lindstrom, you got Kyle Pitts, you got Cordero Patterson, Grady Jarrett, uh, Casey Hayward, AJ Terrell are probably also on that list. Maybe a couple other names that you guys could throw out there, you know, guys that we already know they're going to get be key components of the roster this season. Um, and they're kind of proven, you know, so we can keep their preseason snap counts as low as possible. You know, like it wouldn't shock me at all if Cordero Patterson and Grady Jarrett get zero snaps this preseason. And frankly, that's one instance where I'm like, yeah, you don't need to play those guys in the preseason. You can save them for the regular season as things move forward. Um, but obviously, you know, that's a subset of the Falcons roster, particularly this 90 man roster and the other 80 or so players are needing to play, uh, you know, a considerable amount of snaps, more snaps than 25 or so. Uh, and obviously it's a case by case basis. And we talk about, you know, last year, particularly one of the sticking points of why it was so bothersome to me that the Falcons uh, didn't play some of these guys in the preseason because they had a brand new starting five and those guys got zero snaps playing together uh, in the preseason. And so they went into against a Philadelphia Eagles team in week one, a, a very formidable defensive line with zero continuity. And this year we, we can guess, we'll, you know, we'll see if they run it back with the same starting five, but even still you want those guys to get some continuity this year. And we know that, you know, given that the Falcons are having open competitions at left guard and center and potentially right tackle as well. Like you want to see, you know, these guys get some run, uh, before facing off against the New Orleans Saints, a team that notoriously uh, and consistently has kicked our butts in the trenches uh, in the regular season. So you want to get some work for those guys, and that's one of many positions. Um, you know, the other element about guys playing in the preseason, and I think we talked about this a little bit in June when we talked about the quarterback position, is it is notable that Felipe Franks has moved to tight end and, and basically has taken like zero snaps so far this summer at quarterback. We'll see if that changes. Um, but, you know, I think one of the upsides of Frank's moving to tight end, not only he seems to, you know, based off of all the practice reports, look a lot more comfortable at tight end this year than he did a year ago. But it also sort of maximizes how many practice reps uh, Desmond Ritter is getting at the quarterback position, having only to split practice reps between two quarterbacks rather than the standard three or four that most teams have at this point in time is giving Desmond Ritter a lot more reps uh, to play. And that's going to be potentially beneficial for him. And the same applies to the preseason games as well. Um, and, you know, even in a world where Desmond Ritter is not necessarily competing for a starting spot, getting him those extra reps is very beneficial today uh, as it will play out a role for his future. Because even in a world where Marcus Mariota is, you know, the week one starter, as we all uh, expect him to be, you know, once we get to the regular season, whoever the backup quarterback is, is not going to get really any reps during the season. Like all his reps are going to be mental, very little practice reps during the season. And so it makes total sense for the Falcons to want to maximize Desmond Ritter's uh, summer reps. Um, because once we get to September and October and potentially later, you know, those reps are going to just go away. Uh, and you're not going to have the ability to develop him then as you do now. Uh, and, you know, we'll we'll see how long, you know, it takes before the Falcons insert Desmond Ritter into the starting line. I still maintain that we'll probably see him start a game before we get to Thanksgiving, but we'll we'll sort of see how that goes. But it's reminiscent to me a little bit of what the Falcons did in 2016 with Wes Schweitzer, uh, their sixth round pick then uh, and a rookie then because he was competing. And I, I should use air quotes competing uh, with starter Chris Chester at that right guard position. And he was getting a lot of first team reps, Schweitzer, that is uh, alternating with Chester a lot. Um, and, you know, I thought that was a smart move on the Falcons part, because back then, nowadays, you can have eight active offensive linemen. But back then it was seven active offensive linemen. And because Schweitzer didn't have that center versatility that he would later develop later in his career, um, he wasn't going to be one of those seven active uh, offensive linemen. It was going to be Bing Garland was going to be their utility interior guy. And of course, the incomparable Ty Sambrello was going to be their swing tackle. Um, but I remember at the time where people were like, oh, Wes Schweitzer is going to be is competing with Chris Chester. And I just remember being very dismissive at that time like there's no way that this rookie that's played his entire career as a left tackle moving to right guard for the first time is going to unseat a, a veteran like chris chester who's basically been a starting right guard in this league for a decade there's just no possibility where he could go out and out compete 
Chris Chester for a starting job, even if you were one of those Falcon fans who were there were many at the time that thought Chris Chester was terrible the year before. Like there was just no way that 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 was going to be a real competition. And like I remember being dismissive at the time, but I think it was part of the plan that the Falcons had because they knew that once the season started, Wes Schweitzer was not going to get any reps, assuming Chris Chester stayed healthy. And they knew that 2016 was probably going to be Chris Chester's final year going into that summer. Uh, and they wanted to give Schweitzer the maximum reps because they knew he would basically be plugged into the starting lineup the following off season. And they wanted to sort of get him some seasoning, at least, you know, in that initial rookie summer. And that proved to be true because Schweitzer wound up playing, I think, zero games as a rookie uh, before being handed at starting gig the following off season. So you know, we got to get Ritter uh, as many reps as he can get this summer, uh, because at some point he's going to be the Falcon starter. Again, I, I think we'll see that later this year, probably in, in November, or December, uh, in, in January. But, you know, obviously in 2023, that's also a real possibility. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, but, you know, speaking of Wes Schweitzer, uh, former Falcons left guard, let's talk about the current Falcons left guard in, in Jalen Mayfield who, you know, apparently had a rough day of practice on Tuesday. Uh, And that will sort of bridge us into a conversation about Tevin Jenkins, um, who a lot of people have asked, will, you know, Falcons general manager Ryan Pace make a trade for the former Bears second round pick? And we'll get into that as we continue today's episode, guys. But before we get there, uh, I want to tell you about the Locked On Sports Atlanta podcast family, where you can find three shows with four hosts, uh, Hitting Hard with John Chakari, A to Z with... Uh, Mark Zeno and ATL Day Ones with Jarvis Davis and Tanitra Patisse breaking down all of local sports as well as national sports. Uh, and of course, you can find them on the same podcast platforms you're currently listening or watching Locked On Falcons. And if you check out Locked On Sports Atlanta on YouTube, you get the Locked On Braves postcast breaking down every Braves win and loss this season, as well as the Locked On Falcons postcast. Once games get started in the preseason and into the regular season, you can check out myself and Jarvis Davis breaking down every Falcons win and loss after each game on the Locked On Sports Atlanta YouTube channel. And guys, you know, speaking of preseason, you know, I I noticed by heading over to, you know, the number one source for all my sports betting needs and info and all your sports betting needs and info, that's, of course, betterline.net, that the line for the Falcons-Lions preseason opener has already moved. The Lions were previously favored by three points. Now they're favored by two points. So something has happened in the last couple of days where, you know, a lot of people are are swarming uh, the Falcons in this game and feeling like, you know, the Falcons are on the rise. So if you want to get in on that action or, you know, you're a hater like me and you want to go and bet on the lines, I haven't bet on the lines just in case you, you guys are, are worried about it. I'll, I'll probably wind up betting on the Falcons, uh, you know, or you want to bet on things other than football, like Major League Baseball, UFC, boxing, esports, Vegas casino games. You want to bet on upcoming NFL regular season stuff. You want to bet on next year's NBA and NHL seasons. You can find it all by going to the website at betonline.net and learn more about the trends in action. Bet online where the game starts. So apparently Jalen Mayfield had a rough day of practice on Tuesday. You can see a clip uh, posted by, you know, fellow Falcoholic contributor Kevin Knight of him getting beat by Derek Tangelo in a one-on-one rep. And that goes back to something we said earlier about, you know, some of these young guys shining uh, in practice, getting that opportunity. And we'll see if Tangelo can continue that as an undrafted free agent that a lot of people, myself included, think has a good shot at making a run at the practice squad and potentially the roster now, uh, given some of the issues the Falcons are dealing with up front. But, you know, that clip, you know, I won't say went viral, but like, you know, I think it led to a lot of people on Falcon Twitter to have some very strong reactions, arguably some overreactions based off of that one rep. And, and that's part of the reason why, like, you don't see me spending too much energy, quote, tweeting some of these clips that people like Kevin and others are posting on Twitter about training camp. And like, this is no knock on Kevin. I think Kevin's doing a great job. But like, it's one of those things where like, I I feel like people have a tendency to overreact to these things uh, because they will take like six seconds and act like they just broken down like 60 minutes of film. And and this is why like I'm this film snob and I was condescending and arrogant because it's like, you're not going to learn that much in six seconds on one single rep, you know, out of dozens or hundreds of reps that you really need to see to evaluate a player. Uh, It can be a good rep. It could be a bad rep. You know, obviously with Jalen Mayfield, we've seen plenty of bad reps from him over, over time, but 
I wouldn't necessarily use one rep to sort of define, oh, he, well, he's terrible and he's made zero gains. We'll, we'll see what he does in, in the preseason action against, you know, no offense to Derek Tangelo, but like against got real guys, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so we'll see how that goes. But, you know, part of that overreaction that I, I saw from this clip was, you know, a lot of people sort of speculating that maybe Jalen Mayfield's on the roster bubble. Maybe he's not as safe for that roster spot. Um, as we previously thought, especially given the fact that Elijah Wilkinson seemingly has surpassed him and is the front runner to be the starter, getting his fifth day in a row as getting those first team uh, reps at the left guard position. Um, and, you know, as I've said multiple times over the last several days, you know, competitions aren't necessarily finalized in the first week of training camp, but it's certainly possible for a guy like Wilkinson to create some separation if he can. Um, but you know, I do think when it comes to Jalen Mayfield, this notion that he may get cut is one of those overreactions. I won't say it's an impossibility because uh, we've talked before about sort of how much the Falcons shook up their uh, offensive line uh, group in the 2015 summer. So it's not unprecedented for a player at this point in time to get cut by the end of training camp. We saw that with Joe Hawley that summer. We saw that with John Osamo going on IR, but potentially had he not been injured, potentially would have been on the trade block and it would have been cut at that time as well. And certainly there was nobody six days into training camp that summer feeling like Either one of those two outcomes was a possibility at that point in time. So I won't say it can't happen. I won't say it's impossible that Jalen Mayfield could get cut. We'll just say it's very, very, very unlikely. But let's imagine for a second that it does happen. And the Falcons do decide to move on from their former third round pick after his disastrous rookie season, as well as an underwhelming uh, summer. And so let's just picture that in our minds for a second. You know, let's imagine Jalen Mayfield being cut and no, the fact that I'm smiling, you shouldn't read anything into that. Now I want you to picture that in your mind. And now I want you to picture Tevin Jenkins. And for those of you that don't know who Tevin Jenkins is, he's the former uh, 2021 bears second round pick. Uh, he was initially drafted to be their long-term left tackle. And now according to Ian Rappaport um, is potentially on the trade block. Um, and you know, uh, Jenkins was a highly touted prospect coming out of Oklahoma State last year. Uh, most people, myself included, thought he would be a first round pick in last year's draft. He fell into round two. The Bears traded a third round pick to go up and get him at pick 39, one spot ahead of Richie Grant, by the way. Uh, he did deal with some back issues in college, and that carried over into his rookie season so that he basically missed all of training camp and most of the season dealing with a back injury to the point that the Bears had to call Jason Peters out of retirement to come start for them at that left tackle position. He did get uh, healthy late in the season and come in and start for an injured Peters late in one game against the Vikings, I think in like week 13 or week 14 late that season and, you know, earn solid grades according to PFF in that one game. Um, and then, so went into this off season, you know, people being excited. Okay. Like we didn't get the rookie year impact, but you know, we'll get that second year improvement from Devin Jenkins once he's healthy from, you know, bears fans. And then sort of in mini camp, you know, I think bears fans and, and media were a little surprised to see, Tevin Jenkins getting second team reps behind Larry Borum, who was a fifth round pick from the Bears a year ago. And you also saw the Bears draft a third round offensive tackle in Braxton Jones uh, and signed veteran Riley Reef, I think a week or two ago uh, as well. And so I think from what I understand, Jenkins practiced the first day of practice and hasn't practiced since then, right, in training camp. Uh, and there have been reports that part of the reason why he's been essentially benched um, is that he's clashed with the Bears' current offensive line coach, everybody's favorite former Falcons offensive line coach, Chris Morgan. Now, I have no problem with any human being on the planet that clashes with Chris Morgan. I would love to clash with Chris Morgan uh, because he's terrible uh, as a coach. But if the Bears are truly on the path to moving on from Tevin Jenkins after one year, like I look at that as a massive red flag for any of those people that are, you know, potentially looking at him as a potential reclamation project for a team like the Falcons, right? You know, the point being that it's extremely rare when an NFL team is going to give up on an early round pick after one season. 
And the reason why I juxtaposes with Jalen Mayfield's situation is it's a similar situation. Because imagine in a scenario where the Falcons give up on Jalen Mayfield or the Falcon, you heard a report from Ian Rappaport, oh, the Falcons are shopping Jalen Mayfield. And you'd be snickering, being like, oh, man, we're about to fleece somebody who's going to trade for Jalen Mayfield, right? You know, um, and someone else is like, oh, we'll we'll reclaim Jalen Mayfield. The Falcons are terrible. We'll, we'll fix him. Like, oh, yeah, good luck with that. But yet when you can clearly picture that in your mind when it comes to trading Jalen Mayfield away from Atlanta, as many of you I'm sure can, you know, that part of your brain never engages when it's on the flip side of things, when it's a player like Tevin Jenkins, right? All you see is your eyes just get big and you say, well, I really like Tevin Jenkins as a pre-draft prospect. And so why not kick the tires on Tevin Jenkins, Aaron, right? You know, and, and, you know, you being talking back to me on, on today's podcast, you would be like, hey, Aaron, you yourself have already mentioned several times on the podcast that you expect the Falcons to be in the market for a brand new right tackle next offseason anyway, right, after they basically just, you know, have Caleb McGarry and Jermaine Effetti be their sort of bridge guys to get them through this season. Why not kick the tires on a young, talented reclamation project like a Tevin Jenkins? Um and I sit here and I go like, again, picture Jalen Mayfield, picture how bad a player has to be, how much of a disaster a player has to be for the Falcons, in this case, to give up on Jalen Mayfield. Now just flip it and imagine that scenario with uh, Tevin Jenkins. And this is part of the reason why, like, I just don't understand people's obsession when it comes to these reclamation projects. Like when we look at the certainly recent history of teams that have given up on an early round pick after one season, like when has that gone on to be successful? We saw it with Josh Rosen. We saw it with Isaiah Wilson um, with the Titans, the offensive tackle. We saw it with Ja'Kai Polite a couple of years ago with the Jets, CJ Henderson with the Jaguars a year ago. Now we'll see about CJ Henderson and maybe he, he turns it around with the Panthers. He's currently, as I understand it, their number three cornerback, which, you know, it's a far cry from a top 10 pick. You don't necessarily want to see a guy basically being, you know, a, a starter, but like kind of a backup, uh, you know, three years into his NFL career. So we'll see if he can turn things around, but these other examples, I'm like, it, this is such a low hit rate. And you know, this is why, like I have this pet peeve against reclamation, where it's like every three months people getting enamored. Well, oh, we'll reclaim him. I'm like it, it never works out guys. Like why are we sitting here pretending like, Oh, well we'll get him in our building and we'll just be able to, you know, fix him and, and solve all his problems. Like, you know, if, if the bears cut Tevin Jenkins, you know, putting him on the practice squad and, and doing that, sure. But I'm not going to give up an asset for him, you know. And then, you know, I'm sure some people are like, well, you know, that would be a, a an easy Deion Jones trade destination, right? Well, you swap. Okay, yeah. You're going to swap a starting linebacker for a third-string offensive tackle because that's probably what Tevin Jenkins will be here in Atlanta. So, like, you know, I hope you get some some decent value at that point in time because uh, that is certainly, you know, as, as someone who's like, you know, let's dump Deion Jones for nothing, but, like, you know, really, like, really? Okay. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, I guess something is better than nothing, but like, I just, I, I don't get people fast. So if you're sitting here wondering like, Hey, you know, Ryan Pace, Falcons general manager, you know, he drafted Tevin Jenkins in Chicago, you know, he's bringing all these ex bears, uh, into the building. Why not bring in Tevin Jenkins? And you're wondering what my opinion on it. It's like, huh, I don't know, man. Just like, just wait and draft a good offensive tackle that you don't have to worry about whatever the baggage, whatever the concerns or whatever the red flags that Tevin Jenkins is, is going on in Chicago uh, currently at this point in time and just draft some talented, you know, clean player, clean prospect or sign somebody like a Jack Conklin or Mike McGlinchey next off season. And, and, and why, what's the point? I just don't get the point of these reclamation projects. You know, someone else's trash, you know, might be your treasure, but more than likely it's just going to be more trash. You're just adding trash. Like why are you sitting here digging through a dumpster? That's my, that's kind of how I, I see these reclamation projects, but you know, maybe that's harsh or whatever the case may be. Not to mention, I, I don't love Tevin Jenkins' fit in the outside zone scheme. I know the Bears run an outside zone scheme, but when they drafted him last year, I was like, I don't really love that fit. That feels like a square peg in a round hole to me. Uh, so that's part of it where it's just like, eh, I don't know. But that's my thoughts on Tevin Jenkins. If, if, if you cared to know, uh, we'll see what happens with Jalen Mayfield moving forward again. You know, as I've mentioned several times, you know, no competitions are, are def defined and, and determined you know, six days into training camp and, you know, how players perform in these games and we'll actually get to see these guys in the preseason this summer, unlike last summer. So, you know, some of these starting competitions will be and continue to be won over the next coming, over the coming weeks. So we'll see how it all develops for the Falcons. That's why I say be patient, 
don't overreact, you know, check out Kevin's clips on, online, but you know, don't, don't fall too, too far, uh, you know, off whatever, uh, <laughs> the, the overreaction bandwagon. I don't, I don't know. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm rambling now guys. I'm done talking. So I appreciate you guys for making lockdown Falcons your first listen each and every day. Of course, always recommend, uh, lockdown sports Atlanta as a second listen, check out lockdown Braves. Braves are making moves. Uh, you know, check that out. Locked on Hawks, locked on Bulldogs. Um, you know, if you're curious about Dabo Sweeney showing up so he can dap up, you know, AJ Terrell and Grady Jarrett at practice today, uh, you know, go check out Locked on Clemson. Uh, so you can do that as well. So, guys, I really appreciate it. If you want to provide your feedback for future episodes, you can do so uh, by hitting me up on Twitter at Locked on Falcons. Uh, locked uh, Facebook at Lockdown Falcons. You can send an email to Lockdown Falcons at mail.com. And of course, you can leave a comment here on the Lockdown Falcons YouTube channel. Appreciate it, guys. Till then.